Uh, John seven. is asking, yeah, yeah. VA7, just getting into it, Cam seem to make a contact, have power when transmitting 50 to 60 watts, seem to be receiving and decoding, time syncing is off maybe. Um, yeah. It's, that could, it's, time sync is definitely the, probably the number one culprit if you're yep. not having trouble, or if you're having trouble um, decoding uh yep. ft8 signals you need well, to be it, yeah. it sounds like it sounds like he's decoding so he's not too far off you know if, you, if you're more than uh i don't know what is the tolerance on that it's like is it two seconds if you're more two than two seconds, seconds off two seconds it, uh yeah. i try to get yeah your best your best bets to get within a second right so, right if you right. can the, yeah yeah so but the look on the disc on the uh screen in your decode screen and see what the differential is on, yeah. the, on the stations that you're decoding. So if it's, you know, if you're right on the money, the difference will be like 0.1 or, or, or 0.2. If mm -hmm. it's, two, if it's like two or we're getting close to two, then that time syncing could be a problem because the, the other guys may be having difficulty decoding you. Yeah, so, absolutely. So that, that could be it. The other thing I would look at is, is look at a watt meter and make sure that you're actually transmitting when you think you're transmitting, mm -hmm. you know, that, that you have power going out. Because uh, it should be it, sh it should be uh, steady power mm -hmm. when you're transmitting for that 15 second duration. And, yep. Uh, yeah, um, I'm just going to go back here on the time sync kind of thing, and then I'm going to add a couple other things that uh, you should look at. Uh, but um, I'm just going to pull up the screen here quick, and there we go. Um, for time syncing, I there's this little utility that I use called JT Sync. Yep. And what it does, it'll do two things. Number one is it can um, it can sync your clock using a time server. Um, so if you've got an internet connection, say if you're out in the field and you're using a hotspot or something like that, uh, you can sync with a, um, you know, with, with, a, with a, time server, uh, a, a time server, which is really nice. Uh, but the second thing it could do is that if, you're, if your synchronization is reasonably close, like within about a second, if, it's, if you're too far off and you can't get enough decodes, um, what it will do... Um, is it will listen to the stream and mm -hmm. it will and if you look here on this on this column here where it says dt those are everybody else's times in relation to you it will it will look it'll take everybody else's timestamps average them out <laughs> and um, you can then set your clock so that you're synchronized to what people are actually doing on the ft8 waterfall and yep. I found that's that's uh, when I start an FT8 session. Now I'll always I'll, I'll I'll load up JT Sync, and I'll make sure that I'm locked with everybody else, and that saves a lot of a lot of hassle. Yep, so. yep. And you don't you don't need you don't need to have uh, access to a time source. You're just looking at everyone else, and you make the assumption, mm -hmm. and it's a pretty safe assumption that they're all right. So yeah. if you can if you can get on the same path with them, or you know synchronize to them, that's all that matters, and, yep. and it does a really good job of that. It what it does is it averages all of those differences, and then it and then you just push the button in it, and it adjusts the clock on your laptop. Yep, yep, and um, yeah. Well, also, we got a. Um, you can also use JT Sync to try and manually sync up with another one who's really far off and try to get a contact with them. Um, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is, that's another that's another advantage of it. If you can synchronize to the other person's clock, if they're like way off. Um, yeah. You know, well, yeah. Yeah, because if, if let's say that your clock is more than two seconds off, then mm -hmm. you don't get any. You don't have any decodes. Okay. No. So you can't automatically sync to them, but but you can listen and with your ear you can say, you know what, when they stop transmitting, it's like ten seconds after the hour on my clock. Yeah. So I'm off by at least ten seconds. So then you go you can manually enter ten seconds and see if that gets you in the ballpark. It's yep. it's very easy. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there's a couple other things you can check. Uh, William just brought up something that I was going to mention, uh, possibly overmodulating. That's yep. another that's another yep. thing that can happen. If you're decoding, if you can if you're if you're having no problem decoding, but people can't um, uh, uh, re, you know, uh, copy your signal, you've probably got too much modulation. And what you're going to want to do is to reduce the ALC on your transceiver. Yep. There is yep. a function. ALC is the automatic level control. And yep. that'll a lot of times that kind of um, throws things off. So uh, yep. turn down the ALC so that yep. the needle or the bar graph is just barely moving. Yep. Um, you might need another thing you might need to do is just to kind of or reduce the sound level on your computer just a little bitty bit. You know the out the outboard sound sometimes too. You know that'll uh, that helps too with with the with the just get that perfect modulization mod, modulation. Yeah, there's um, a level there's a level control on the right hand side of the JT uh, yeah. uh, screen too for it's like I think they call it like drive level. Mm -hmm. And you what you want to do is is uh, bring that drive level down until your yep. ALC is zero because you, yep, you really don't. You don't want any compression or distortion at all. So no. bring it down to a zero. If you don't have an ALC monitor on your rig, watch your watch a watt meter, and and turn that AL, turn that level down, the drive level down until your power level starts to drop. Yep. Because if you're overdriving it, the power will get to a certain point, and it'll it won't go any higher, and you're just creating massive distortion when you go beyond that. So yeah. So so bring that drive level down until your power starts to starts to drop a little bit, and then you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. That that's another thing to check. Um, if you're having trouble receiving your um, um, uh, FT8 signals, um, is this is like with the Yaesu radios, especially the FT891. Every time you switch to the data mode. It always sets the 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 bandwidth to its <laughs> the narrow um, yeah. eighteen hundred hertz, uh, I hate which that. is which is good for um, which which is good for phone, you know, because you get that nice narrow width. But um, you got to expand that width all the way out so you can hear the entire pass band. So that's uh, that's that's one of those um, quirks of the FT eight ninety one. Other 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 rigs do a much better job with giving you that full bandwidth, but make sure, yeah, make sure your width is fully, uh, fully expanded so you can hear the entire pass band. Uh, usually when I look at the water, when I know my width hasn't been set yet, um, and I look at the waterfall, I'll see, you know, just this intense, you know, receive signal right in the middle of the waterfall. And then I yeah. know, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta expand that. And <laughs> Yeah. So I see John okay. said that his ALC, he's watching the yeah. ALC and it's low, but the ALC should actually be zero. Turn it, turn yeah. it all the way to zero. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, might be. Yeah. He's, he's, he's thinking that it's probably the time sink. And I, 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 I bet you it will. It is too, most likely. That's, you know, you know, there, there is one other thing I just mm -hmm. thought of. Uh, if you have RF leaking into the USB cable, the RF, can can cause uh, it distortion of of the audio that because it's just audio it's going from your computer to your yeah. transmitter and if that audio gets distorted with RF um, you know hum or buzz or interference that that would mess it up too. If your if your if your if your ALC is good if your time is good um, if your width is good. Yeah, and then yeah, then I guess yeah, the next che it would be to check your cables, make sure you're not getting um, RF into you know in, in into the system, which would mm -hmm. give you yeah like a ground loop or feedback, so chokes on those. So yeah, oh, yep. Hopefully that that uh, gave you a lot of give you a lot of things to look for, but uh, hopefully that'll one of those will will be a will be a solution for you. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.